Next question. Over here, for um, so at the beginning of the fight, Clayton started really fast. Did that speed at all catch you off guard? Um, I, I wouldn't say it was his speed. I think it was a little bit of his. Um, he came out very. It's crazy because I knew he would come out fiery. That was the whole game plan: is like slow him down. But still, I came out a little bit too relaxed. I was enjoying the crowd. I was enjoying the whole um, uh, occasion so much. I think I came out a little bit too chilled out. Uh, but I didn't think he was crazy fast. Um, I pretty much saw most of the things. It was just uh, I came out maybe enjoying myself a little bit too much. And training at Extreme Couture, did you have anyone in the gym being able to kind of replicate that speed? So I did, uh, like usual, I do all my training. In, uh, I, I mix it in between uh, Extreme Couture and uh, BK MMA, Black Cobra MMA. That's Dewey Cooper's gym. Um, I had... The, the usual suspects, my brother Javid, Amir Al-Bazi. Uh, this camp, I did a lot of work with Manel Cap. Manel Cap. He's fighting next week in Sydney. So we were just, um, you know, peaking at the same time in camp. And uh, those were crazy, crazy rounds, to be honest. Like, going with Manel was a very good work for, for Clayton, you know, because um, Manel is a flyweight, uh, similar attributes to Clayton, just far more skilled and, and you know, all around better, I think. Those were crazy rounds. I really had to, to focus for those rounds, and those they improved me. I had uh, Timmy Kwamba from BKMMA, as usual, just won Dana White Contender Series. Um, uh, Vince Morales. Um, just, and a bunch of other guys. Um, those are the main, the main guys for this camp. And uh, yesterday at the weigh-ins, there was a lot of crowd love for you when you stepped on the scale. Did yeah. you expect that at all? No, to be honest, I didn't expect it because... Um, uh, because I'm not French and I could hear the, for the French they were going crazy. But for me, um, I don't know, uh, I think they appreciate my style. They appreciate my swagger, my style of fighting. And even when I came out tonight, I heard a real good pop. And even, even after the fight, I heard a real good pop from the crowd. So I didn't expect it so much, but it was, it was very, um, I appreciate it a lot. It was very flattering. And that was your second fight this year. Are you looking to maybe get one more in before the year ends? Yeah, I was trying to get some mic time from uh, Bisping, but he wasn't letting me have it. I want to fight December 16th, the last pay-per-view of the year. Um, uh, maybe if it's McGregor Chandler, that would be great. If not, whoever, it doesn't matter. I want to fight December 16th. I think it's 15 weeks from now. I feel good for the most part. Uh, so I want to stay active. I want to get back in there. Uh, I feel very confident in my ability. So December 16th, that's the day, I, that's the card I want to fight on. And last one from me, is there an opponent on the tip of your tongue? No, there isn't anybody I, I have in mind. Um, the division's in a place where most of the people, most of the people uh, above me are booked. Most of the, and like there's some guys who I feel are like are below me, but I don't really want to, they're not worth calling out, you know? So I don't want to like cherry pick or anything. So that's why I want to say the date. December 16th, and uh, my manager Ali and Sean Shelby, I'm sure they will talk, and uh, I hope we get somebody. Thank you. So first of all, congrats on your win. Thank Spectacular you. uh, finish. So bearing in mind in finish, your statistics are like impeccable, you're unbeaten, mm -hmm. and it's rarely in MMA to hold this state of uh, being, like being unbeaten. So what's your approach to it? Does it give you a lot of like pressure or motivation to keep it this way, or you just don't care? There is a lot of uh, motivation to keep it this way because uh, you never want to lose in this sport, you know. Even when you win in this sport, you can get injured and hurt and it's, you know, it's a painful sport to be in. So, of course, I always want to win. I always want to do my best. And there is pressure too, but, you know, pressure makes diamonds. And the best fighters in the world, they all, uh, they soak in this pressure and they thrive in this pressure, you know. Well, the pressure is going to be there. The lights are going to be bright. The opponents are going to be tough. The gloves are going to be real small, so I can't change any of these factors. The pressure will be there, so I might as well um, embrace this, you know? Yeah. Among all those submissions that are numerous in your case, mm -hmm. um, a lot of rear neck chokes here, we have like arm triangle. Yeah. Um, are you like going specifically for like grapple and doing the chokes and stuff, or just it's like in the, in the process somehow going on? I, I never target anything specific, you know, because when you fight, you have to be fluid. Whatever they give you, you have to take. I do my jiu-jitsu, my grappling with Jake Shields. Um, 
you can see my development in the last two years since I've worked with him. Uh, you know, uh, you guys are really going to see more and more of my, my full skill set. Um, I think I came into the UFC, most people thought I was like a striker, taekwondo, kickboxing guy. But now you see, maybe my grappling is even more dangerous than my striking. So uh, I think people are going to start respecting this from now on. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. All good? That's it. Thank you.